Hey YouTube, welcome back to Just Peeling Barbecue. Today let's do some beer brats on the Watchman stove. I'm going to show you how, to do, how I do beer brats. I have another video uh, doing beer brats on my charbroil kettleman. I'll put a link up there to that. But uh, today we're going to do it on the Watchman stove. Now I could do it on, on the Watchman stove several different ways just using one particular method on the Watchman stove. But today because this is my first cook, I want to show you guys the versatility that this stove has. So I'm going to use several, several, just about every accessory that I have except the hitch accessory today. Just to show you how you can use them interchangeably. And it's fun to piddle around with back here. Last night, my wife and I, we stayed out here till about 11 o'clock last night, just using it as a fire pit, and it was awesome. When this thing gets hot, the whole thing from top to bottom gets hot and radiates heat just like a pot belly stove, probably a three foot radius all the way around this thing. So even though you don't have a, a flame putting your hands right over it, you don't need it because this thing is pumping out radiant heat from every direction. Now it does get hot enough to where it shoots flames out about that high up off the top. So uh, you create the fire. And uh, it was fun peeling around with it last night and getting to use it in that way. Now we're going to use it every single way that we can use it and I'm going to show it to you so stay tuned. Alright I took my other mic off because I'm going to be moving around and everything and I don't want that cord going all over the place so I hope you can hear me pretty good. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cook the vegetables and I'm going to utilize the griddle to cook those vegetables with. I'm also going to be utilizing the charcoal grate insert and I'm going to be using lump charcoal for that. Now you could use it, you could uh, cook the vegetables, you could cook the whole thing on regular firewood, bottom feeding it through the bottom if you wanted to and it would be perfectly fine. But we're going to do the bonfire a little bit later. I want to utilize the charcoal insert for this first cook with the griddle. So I'm going to put that charcoal insert in now. Now with the charcoal grate insert, all we're doing is taking this insert and putting it right in that hole and covering that hole up so that the charcoal stays right under our cooking grate. Now the charcoal is just about ready to go ahead and dump into the Watchman stove. But I want to tell you that I have already seasoned the griddle. I cooked some bacon. and Well, I did a process where I heated it up oiled it, rubbed it down, let it cool, oiled it again, and I repeated that process for about three or four times. Then I cooked a whole pound of bacon on it, um, and it seasoned up really well. So the griddle is gonna look a little darker, especially in the center, but that's because I've already seasoned it up. I did also cook some smash burgers on them just to try it out, and they were amazing too. So expect an upcoming video of those as well. But I have already seasoned the griddle. So it's gonna look like it when I put it on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and dump these charcoal in. They've been going, they've been going about 20 minutes. Now we're just gonna kind of spread these out and make sure we got an even heat. And again, it's drawing air from the bottom down there. So it's got plenty of air coming up through. Now we're going to go ahead and get our griddle on. Now I'm going to put the griddle on the right way, even though I'm standing actually behind it, but this is just for filming purposes, so I'm not in the way. Make sure all the tabs are on the inside, and they are. And now we're just going to let the griddle come up the temp. And then we're going to get our vegetables on. All right, now when I set this Watchman stove where it is, I, I got to level out just because that's kind of the way I am, I guess, and leveled it up. But I did level it from front to back, a little bit downhill toward the back so that things don't slide off the front, grease don't slide off the front, it kind of slides toward the back rim. So that's just a little tip for you if you're setting up yours at home. I'm sure it's pretty hot right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and shoot some oil on it just to kind of 
get things flowing good. And also, another thing I'm going to be using today is some Reload Rubbing Spice, Reload Rubbing Seasoning. And I'm going to put a link to this. Uh, I'll put it up here to their uh, site, and it'll be in the description box. They own a uh, Watchman stove, and I saw them, I think, on Instagram using their rubs in conjunction with the Watchman stove, and I wanted to try it out. So uh, I tried them out. I bought both of their rubs. They have two rubs right now. This is the fully loaded, and they have a double action, which is kind of a sweet and smoky. That's good as well, but I'm going to be using the fully loaded today. Um, it's really a good all-purpose rub, so we're going to use that today. And there's no doubt that this thing is hot, as you can hear. So we're going to go in with these. Now, the reason why I'm doing this today with the uh, vegetables is because I want to get a little cover on them before I actually put them in to the, to the uh, pan. I could just put them right in the pan, but uh, I figured I could utilize this griddle and get a little color on them before I actually put them into the pans in that beer bath. So I think this is going to, is going to add a little bit of extra flavor to it. So they're on the hot griddle. Put a little fully loaded seasoning on them. We're just going to let these go until they get a little color on them, and then we'll put them in the beer bath. All right, folks. These things are getting some good color on them. And you're talking about fun to cook on? This thing is fun to cook on. I mean, I mean, it feels like you're like a real chef in your backyard or something. If you're looking for something that's fun to cook on in your backyard, and this summer, when everybody's in the pool messing around and we're out here cooking, I mean, this is perfect. And you're in control of everything. So, uh, no electronics, no nothing, just pure cooking. Awesome. These look pretty good now, so I'm going to go ahead and get these off. I'm going to be cooking with two pans today, one on each side of the potato plate and the beer bath. But I'm gonna put them all in one pan for now so we can get this griddle off and start getting our grill pan hot. All right, so now for phase two, we're gonna go into grill mode from griddle mode. I'm just gonna take this griddle, be very careful because it's hot. Quickly set it down right there. I've got my charcoal chimney that's cooled off just sitting right here beside me and I just set it on top of it. Now we still got some great coals and I'm gonna lift my grill grate up and now we're ready for grill mode. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do, I've got two pans here because I've got two different types of sausage and I'm gonna tell you about that in a little bit but I'm just gonna divide these uh, peppers and onions up into the separate pans, about half and half. That'll work. And I'm going to set them on this potato plate and let that start warming up. Now, on this side over here, I'm going to go with a Corona light simply because it was the lone one in the refrigerator. I'm ready to get it out of there. And on this side, I'm going to go with a Miller Lite. But go with your favorite beer. Whatever kind of beer that you use or that you like, go for it. Now, again, I'm going to go in with a little bit of Reload, fully loaded seasoning on top in both of them. And I like a little bit of, of vinegar pickled, sweet, but spicy kind of flavors in my, my beer brats. And these uh, Mount Olive sweet and hot salad peppers are perfect for this. And that's what I'm gonna go in with about half and half, liquid and all. One might've got a little bit more than the other. It even. And it's wind 
handy out here today. The camera's on top of it over twice. So stay tuned for that at the end of the video. Give this a stir. And man, it smells amazing already. While the grill grate's getting heated up. And again, I have seasoned the grill grate as well, so it's good to go. But since I'm cooking with some sausage and has a potential to roll off the grill grate, I'm going to be using this hot dog bumper to prevent that from happening. And that fits right over your grill grate, gives it this edge so nothing can fall off. Now, just in case you're like me and we're wondering how hot does the potato plate really get, well, I got one of these little gizmos, infrared thermometer, and uh, I was playing with it last night. And after you get a really good fire going in the bottom, it'll actually get up to about 400 degrees close to that, uh, that pipe coming up. But right now, we're looking at about 200 degrees under the pan, right close to the pipe on both sides. And say in the front, we're looking at 150 degrees, 150, 160 degrees in the back corner, 155 degrees in the front corner. So right now we're about 150 in the corners and about 200 degrees close to the pipe. And that's with just cooking with charcoal with the charcoal insert. So all the heat is on the top. It's not even down there at the bottom. Now when you start cooking with real wood down there in the bottom or charcoal down there in the bottom, it's going to be harder because that heat is radiating from the bottom all the way through to the top. So uh, keep all that stuff in mind. This thing is, is pretty daggum versatile. So uh, this thing's about ready to go, so we're about ready to put our sausage on. Okay, it's time to get these sausages on. I have two kinds of sausage, as I mentioned earlier. One is a chicken sausage. Now I'm using these simply because I had them in my freezer. Uh, my brother gave me several packs of them, and so I need to get those out of the freezer, so I'm going to use those for part of the cook. Um, now one thing that you should note about chicken sausage, and that is it has a totally different texture than regular pork sausage, simply because there's not a whole lot of fat to keep that thick texture to bind it together and so it's a lot looser sausage um, and the texture is just a lot different but the tastes are awesome these have a lot of herbs in them um, some garlic and so I think they're going to be really good the other uh, sausage that I have is Johnsonville sweet Italian brats and that's what's going on right there and again I have seasoned um, this grill grate and so it's going to cook well I'm going to leave them just like that let them get some marks and then we're going to flip them over now, as you can see we're getting some really good color on them. and again there's different ways to do beer brats I explained it in my other my other video with beer brats a lot of people put them straight into the beer bath first and then put them on the grill top right before they're served but for me I just like getting some caramelization on them before I put them in the beer bath. That way all of those nice juices, those savory flavors get incorporated into the beer bath. And then when they're just kind of bathing around, swimming around in that bath, everything's getting happy together. And that's kind of why I do it this way because I would rather caramelize first than caramelize right there at the end so that everything gets the same flavors incorporated with them. And I can't say this enough. I want to tell you that I appreciate you coming and uh, visiting my channel. And really what it is, is you're coming into my backyard. And I appreciate y'all coming into my backyard. You're always welcome. And that's what I want my channel to be like, is you're actually coming and hanging out with me in the backyard. And that's, that's what I want it to be like. So I appreciate you coming. And uh, I hope that's the feeling that you get. And, uh, like I say, y'all welcome anytime. Now I'm just using this bumper 
for these bratwurst to make sure that I get some color on all sides so you can lean them up against one side and make sure everything gets a little bit of color with them. Pretty dang cool to cook on this thing. And I'll be back as soon as we start putting them in the bath. Alright, now these have plenty of color on them. So now I'm going to go ahead and get them in this beer bath down here in the bottom. Now there is a little bit of overhang on my pans, so i got to keep that in mind. And I've looked and I have found some pans that are going to fit a little bit better that I'm in the works of getting on Amazon. But these are going to work just fine for now. So we're going to get these in this beer bath and just let them kind of simmer for a while. And for me, this is a this is a cook that I'm not in a hurry to do. I'm actually going to put a few of these on this side too. Why not? But you know, don't have to be in a hurry to do. And just uh, you know, let them simmer for a while. And now we're going to enter phase three, which is fire pit mode. All right, guys. Now we've got everything in the uh, beer bath. I have wrapped both the pans uh, pretty good with tin foil, and um, and I'll get you a shot of that too. I know you can't see the pans right now. I'm trying to kind of get everything. Um, but now we're going to enter phase three, which is fire pit mode or bonfire mode. And I need to get a, give a, a quick a quick shout out to uh, Kirk Salmon, who is actually the creator, the inventor of this uh, Watchman stove. And the way that he designed it uh, is outstanding. I mean, it's as versatile as you can get. And so now my, my funnest part is the bonfire mode. And I'm just gonna grab this bumper because I know it's hot. And I'm gonna slide that out of the way. And I'm gonna grab my cool handle, move my grill grate out of the way. And I'm gonna grab my charcoal insert and move it out of the way. And now what has happened is all of my charcoal has fallen to the bottom down there in my fire pot. So now I can start feeding wood from the front and start this bonfire. Let's do it. All right, guys, we've been out here a couple hours, just enjoying the day, peeling in the backyard is what it's all about. I'm ready to eat, so we're fixing to get some of these. Now, this potato plate's been running at around 250 all day long, past couple hours. I've just been sitting out here listening to some tunes, uh, you know, feeling the nice breeze, just enjoying the day. Well, now it's time to eat. Let's see what we got in here. Get this right here. Let's pull it over right here on the old stump. And all I've got right here is some spicy mustard, spicy brown mustard that I'm going to put on it along with these peppers and onions. I oh, mean, the smell hits you right off the bat. It smells awesome. Again, it smells like the fire. Or, or like a fair. Let's get one of these out. Right into the bun we go. And I got two buns because I know I'm going to eat more than one. Right in there. Now let's get some of these peppers and onions out as well. can hear that watching the stove, it's still purring like a cat. I've been running pecan and red oak in it. 
all day just nice and easy. Perfect. Put the top back on that. Get it back on the heat. And try these out. Spicy brown mustard. Perfect. Man, look at that. Let's dig in. Look at that. It's tender, so juicy, packed full of flavor. You've got the beer, you've got the peppers and onions, you've got the sweet and hot peppers, you've got that rub from Reload, Rub and Seasoning Company, and you've got it for a couple hours on the Watchman stove. You cannot beat a cook like this. Please give it a try. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'll be piddling. Crash.